So we are going to start the course with chapter one of our textbook, which actually deals with, uh, um, which starts with approximating the area between the between a curve and the x-axis. And uh, the book mostly takes rectangular approach. That is, you just go ahead and, uh, you know, break the region in several rectangles, sometimes large number of rectangles. And the number of rectangles, uh, you just make, go on making them larger and larger, you know, until you reach desirably close to the area that you're trying to estimate. So sometimes you have left end points, sometimes you have right end points. So I'll let you browse through these uh, slides at your convenience and going to show you a calculation along similar lines. Okay. Now, what I have done is that I have pulled up an online calculator that many of you might have seen before. Uh, you can obtain it by going to the site desmos.com slash calculator. So he here is the part of the window where you shall type or write. And here you shall see a graphical output. And most of the times your calculation results will be available in this area. So let's just take a function. I just took this function is square root of uh, one plus x cube. And you know that uh, that this function is continuous from negative one to infinity. Now let's just take up a question here. That is what we would like to do is that we would like to approximate the area between uh, this curve and uh, the x-axis, say between, uh, say, 0 and 2. So what we will do first is that we shall just go ahead and adjust our window uh, from 0 to 2 or modify the window. So let's quickly do that. That is, uh, let me just first clear this from the board. So what we have is, sorry. So what we have is that we will go right here and say that uh, just change the window from say near zero to uh, x axis being, you know, near two. And we don't need that, but still let's just go ahead and um, shrink the y axis as well. Okay. And uh, the upper part, yeah, may go up to five, say, okay, so here we are, okay. So we have this whole thing here, and what we want in this case is, just repeat, that we would like to get the area between zero and two, between the x-axis, and between what, and between the, uh, uh, and under the area of this curve. So what you have is, that, you know, this is the area right here, sorry, that you want to get an approximate value of, okay? So, if we go by the style that the book suggested, what we can do is this. Let me first erase this because you know now the area that you want to approximate let me bring that uh, line back okay all right so here we go we have the line and so what we will do is as uh, remember the book suggested you can take the left rectangles that is or i may show it to you in a different package and uh, i will demonstrate to you later how do you do that in desmos okay so what you can see here is that we have gone ahead and divided the region in four equal rectangles and um, or rather we have partitioned this interval 0 2 into how many four different sub intervals and here we are keeping them of equal length okay it's not necessary but in our basic calculations that's what we are often going to do and you will see here when we add up all these rectangles it gives us this extra area, but uh, this area is missing. Again, we get this extra area, but this area is missing. And likewise here, this is extra and this is missing. 
So let's go ahead and calculate that how much the area of these four rectangles added together will be. So first let's just make some space here. Okay. So, so what we have is you can see that all these will add up to so you can see or let me just go over that uh, in the next one what we have here is this that you can see we have uh, f at zero because that's what this height is this is the y value for x equals zero which is a one okay so that's the altitude so what we have is that we have f zero and then times how much the width that is 0.5 and then we have f at 0.5 okay and then again multiplied by 0.5 then you got f at where uh, f at 1 multiplied by 0.5 then you got f at 1.5 because this is what this altitude is so f at 1.5 times 0.5 now, how do you abbreviate it? You simply have to do this. So you can use what is called this summation notation, which is like sum this all up. So what we are doing here is that in the, we are taking the values of the function where here is zero, here is one times 0.5, here is how many two times 0.5 and here is 3 times 0.5. So what? how am I going there? Uh, I'm just taking 0.5 times and uh, then what? I just, uh, okay. So, and then I'm doing this multiple of n minus 1. When n equals 1, that is 1 minus 1 times 0.5 is 0. Then n equals 2 gives you 0.5 and that's how you proceed. And then I'm multiplying the altitude by how much? The width, that is 0.5. And my n is ranging from where to where? From 1 to 4. Okay. And we have already defined our f right there. Now what Desmos would do is that it will go ahead and calculate all that for you, even though this would not take you to, too long to calculate by hand. But again, this is not our really a situation that we want to have to approximate the area okay so what we will do now is we will go ahead and click right here so it gives us an another window to write on so if i write sum it gives me summation and uh, i got n equals one going through four now keeping this f the same so we have what we have f of 0.5 times n minus 1 and then that is multiplied by 0.5 right so let's just go conventional style so this is this is how much this is like about uh, 2.783 approximately now let's go ahead and look at uh, the uh, upper Riemann sum or the sum formed by taking the right rectangles. Okay, so in here what happens, the altitudes of the rectangles, they will depend on the right end point. Okay, and for the right end point, the function values, how that, how are they proceeding? They are proceeding like this, that the altitudes are determined by the right end points. So we will have f.5, then f at 1, same as before, and this one. But then the then instead of this one, we are coming over here, which is f of 2. So what happens here is, this time we are just looking at f of 0.5 times n instead of n minus 1 that we had here. So what we will do now is, that we can just go ahead and uh, you know bring this down here and uh, then instead of n minus 1 I'll just take n and then the sum of the areas of the other rectangles let me just bring that over that disappeared there that becomes how much 3.5 uh, 
seven, eight, three approximately. And so as I said before, that if we go ahead and increase the number of rectangles, so for example, here I took, let me take 200 of them. Let's see if it, let me do that. Okay, that's too many for this. You can see they have covered the entire area. So uh, how about 100 then? Okay, so here you can see that there are so many rectangles that there is very little difference between the actual area and the sum of the area of the rectangles that we broke it into. And uh, as we saw, just at n equals 200, the two are indistinguishable in this particular window. So let's assume or let's go, let's just go ahead and take. So what we see is that say we are going to take instead of uh, four, say we take uh, hundred rectangles then what will happen? This width is going to change. That is instead of uh, two over four, that is 0.5 here, we shall get two over a hundred, that will be 0 0.02. So each one of these is going to become what? We will have n ranging from one to a hundred, right? And then uh, we shall have, a point 0.5, not point 0.5, sorry. Uh, the width is point 0 0.02 now, times f of how much? Point 0 0.02 times n, okay? And that will give us the sum with 100 rectangles as shown in this picture, okay? So now we are back to the whole Desmos window. I, so I clicked here and gave me the whole thing. And instead of typing sum and all that again and again, I'm just going to make a change here. So no, sorry, that was n equals one. That's correct. And what we are doing is that we are changing this upper one to how much? A hundred. And then this became 0 0.02. Okay. And this also becomes 0 0.02. Uh, times n. We can leave n in parentheses and you can see that uh, th this sum is now decreasing because uh, you can see the, the rectangles were narrower and uh, we will see if it gets anywhere because this will be decreasing and well let's look at this right here. Let's I am looking at it for the first time myself that how far will Desmos take us. So I took 1000 rectangles at this time. And then what happens? Yes, so it goes on decreasing and looks like it will have a limit. And let me just test it. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to put it to, so here we go. And so we got this, it became, like close to 2.3.242 uh, okay, and uh, let's erase, uh, I'll erase this portion in a moment. So I am going to go ahead and clean the slate first. So now what we will do is that, let's see if we can automate this whole thing instead of just retyping and retyping. So typically by A we mean the lower bound, so I took a equals zero, but it would let me take a from negative 10 to 10 or anything, or uh, I can go ahead and uh, define my own way okay, if you want. Okay. Uh, or yeah, let's keep a as zero because, or, or if you wanted, you can even take a from say uh, negative one to a uh, hundred if you would like, but I'm not going to do that, okay? All right, so uh, yeah, let's just leave it there. Our A was two, so let's just keep it at, well, sorry, our end point was two, so I'm leaving it there. Sorry, I just spoke too much, okay? So I guess that part is done, that A will be between negative one and five. So we got that as our A. Now what we will do is that we will, yeah, we can just define B also as 
you know what we have and we will go let's just put this that lower bound of b is a okay and the upper bound is we, here we are looking from 0 to 2 or we can just say that you know a plus 10 and uh, you can type anything that you want a plus 2 is just good enough for our question okay and now what we will do is we'll just go ahead and define our width or before the width let's just do this remember this that we had say four rectangles in the beginning so let's write n as four okay and uh, we will just put it as a one two uh, remember this we went even up to uh, ten thousand let's make it hundred thousand see how it goes okay. and i'm keeping it at one so anyways so we had started with four rectangles now an advantage would be this that will just go ahead and drag it down and see the values change in the in the way we want and we shall also do this let's automate this one also by doing this let's define a variable w for the rectangle width and uh, the w will be what uh, the w will be b whatever our b is uh, divided by how much n so or, or actually in this case since a is zero it doesn't matter but let's just write it like completely yeah, b minus a over n so you can see it gives us 0.5 as you would expect <laughs> excuse me and now i can do this here see this here i'm going to go to this is n this is my w remember that we just took the width as that and here we'll say w times n and then that should give us the okay so it's not giving us anything oh i see yeah i have too much optical nerve damage i think now it will give us something yes it did so this is for n equals four now notice this as you increase the number of rectangles it just does what uh, look at the bottom value it seems to be just getting closer and closer which we will call convergence later on okay to the value 3.24 one approximately all right so what we can say is that the area between the curve and the x-axis is approximately how much 3.2413 units and that we got up to what up to going up to like about 10,000 rectangles all right even if we take the lower sum uh, which we may or uh, let's just go ahead and take the lower sum just 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 for the sake of it you may have already quit watching me now now first let me just increase the size of this window because uh, i didn't realize i hope you can see it well okay so for the lower sum what i have to do is this will hold, this will be the same thing the only thing is that we are taking what we are taking the left rectangles now and the values don't change much to, I mean, it will like to the fourth digit. We have 3.2413, and here we are taking, so it's still this is the same, but if we were going farther, yeah, we might have had a difference, okay? So 